Um, I'm from New York, Bronx, New York City. Uh, this is actually some artwork right from my blog. Do I press just space here? Oh, good. Okay. Um, I am a production designer. Uh, some of the titles may be off with PowerPoint. I'll explain that. These are my students. This is like 50th Street, Alice in Wonderland. I teach at a theater school. So it's all the backdrops and all the costumes that people wear on stage. Uh, this is from Galileo. So the set was made from Galileo's notebook. I've been teaching there for 16 years. It's a very demanding job. <laughs> Five classes, about 100 to 120 high school students from the Bronx. So every summer I try to get away. Uh, this is my classroom. Well, we paint a lot of backdrops, um, community art. We're constantly busy. Okay, a little bit about my background. I got an MFA in playwriting. So that meant I, I wrote the scripts for all the stories on stage. While I was getting that degree, um, I took uh, printmaking and screen printing. So I started designing um, characters that were connected to my stories. Uh, one of them was called Queen of Scales. I invented this bird, Ravenous, and Gertrude, and they go on a journey, like where the wild things are. Um, later on, this became animation, and just recently, I filmed the live version of this. Okay. Um, I've done a lot of acrylic work. Um, my background is in history and theater, so I have not had any formal art uh, studies. So you'll notice with my style, a lot of it is sort of self-taught, outsider art, <laughs> street art. Um, in New York City, there's a folk art museum that kind of specializes in outsiders. Um, yeah, so these, this is all on fabric. And these became like handbags with zippers. I also started taking my paintings and putting them into necklaces and rings because um, they're like fun to look at. I use a lot of juvenile designs and colors. Okay, uh, 2014 was my first residency in Spain. I went as a writer and I brought some paints, and I got to it. And so I, uh, this is from a play I wrote about bees. And um, these characters came out, and especially that guy. And I also did a site-specific monster piece that summer. I directed them in a cave. It was based on an artist from Korea had these drawings, and she was going through a bit of depression. I said, let's make a show, and we created the monsters, the scripts, did it in one residency. At the time, this birth of Maximus, while I was drawing, I thought of a, a cool bike. I knew a lot of skateboarders from New York City. They were like Peter Pan. They were um, boys who were still uh, attached to skateboarding, men who are still attached to skateboarding, just like basketball or soccer. And I invented this guy, and he's really big. So in real life, it is the size of this screen. Uh, I liked him so much that I thought, what would happen when he grows up? So the bike you see on the bottom is the same size as the last canvas. So the canvas had to grow as he grew. That was like what was happening. And I found that I really liked expanding the canvas. It gave me more space, more detail for me to do some of the texture stuff I had done with costume design. Uh, I started you know, drawing mermaids and brainstorming what's up with this guy. And then I started thinking, why does he have a bicicleta, right? Uh, how did he get it? 
the girl, the amour, uh, what happens when they get older? Older is Vecchio? Vecchio? Vecchio. Vecchio, Vecchio. Um, sacrifice his tail. Uh, Tritone is mermaid. Okay. Tritone with humans. <laughs> Nobody wants a Tritone with a tail. You know. Uh, boring factory job. I started thinking, oh, Andy Warhol. All the boxes. Um, I, I started thinking of an actual gallery that would go through his life so that people could go through each room and see him as um, Bambino, da 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 da, Vecchia, and then American Gothic wedding. Okay. Um, I went back to Conserat, made costumes, and did a site specific thing about wolves. <laughs> these poor people. Uh, <laughs> these were visual artists and novelists from Australia and the United States who were doing their own residency and they were just cool and <coughs> put on costumes and were in my film and it was amazing. I was super lucky. Uh, in 2016 I continued my residencies. I went to Venice and this was like mind-blowing. Near San Marco is that very Fifth Avenue uh, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, <laughs> Coach, Prada. Da, 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 La Prada, all the luxury brands, right? Mm -hmm. And I went, I was like, oh, okay. And then around Lido were like the boatmen who were like, they were like the mermaid, the Tritone. And I thought, oh, there's two worlds here Romeo and Juliet, great expectations. And my mind was like, it was, it was kind of all there. Um, at the time, I was editing a film that I had shot with her. I was using After Effects. Um, I was taking things from Venice <coughs> and photoshopping it with the footage I had from her. So while these projects are going, there's lots of different things happening, not just one project. Uh, this is a costume I had made when we did that film. Um, also, while I was in Venice, I went back to doing my textiles. This is called Lido Lemon, based on the architecture I saw. This one was based on uh, really the, there's bridges and the buildings and the decor. Um, these were done the last week of my residency. I was tired of the computer, so I painted. Um, okay, so this is uh, the story, Venice with the rich woman, the girl Stella, Maximus, the Tritone. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, which is kind of cool. Uh, this guy, this guy, this is Pepe. Pepe came from the Museum of Natural History in Venice. There were actual skeletons, and I saw it. I was like, that guy's cool. I'm going to use him. Um, Good to go to the Museum of Natural History. And then, of course, these guys. Mm. And um, there, are some dis there are some fashion illustrators I really love that do elongated arms and legs, and they've been an amazing inspiration. Okay, in 2017, I was in Costa Prata outside of Rome. Um, this was a very interesting journey. I started getting into street art. Uh, eight years ago, I was in Florence, and I saw some great um, graffiti, and it stayed with me. So I created this exhibit, From Air to Street. Uh, so I created images that would go through the place. So this was by the church, Large Wings. The children, there were so many children in Costa Prata, <laughs> everywhere, at the, at, you know, at the cafe, at the carnival, at the pool. Uh, so I was like, we got to do something with all these kids, because they knew nothing about the artistic residency. So they were coloring the wings. They had little wings, and they wanted to color in the big wings. And it was a whole community mm -hmm. event. 
and they went into the town. The big ones stayed. I didn't take them. They wanted to color them. That was kind of cool. Um, I created this for the vegetable vendor. He would. He came over with a loudspeaker and like Pompadoro, Pompadoro. And everybody ran out. You know, the co-op was far away, so everybody had to go out for their vegetables. I created this for the Peche Man on Fish Day. <laughs> Once again, you know, he'd come around. Um, the gelato place. And these were printed like draft things. Uh, the hair for the hairstylist. I thought this was like a bird hairstyle combo. Uh, this was Plaza del Gato. It's a very fascinating place. So winery and the, the gato. Morte, dead, mummified. So you could go in and see the cat in its, its skin. Um, so I created a cat gate. Um, and that, and uh, I created him, the chingale. And um, this kind of explains what was going on. The chingale was a gladiator, of course. Um, and so I got, I really liked the way the street was doing this. So I had the chingale and then I had like these hooved corn things. The original idea was for them to stick out, but um, we did, we had some limited supplies when it came to install. So that was the chingale. A um, bit more detail with him. He's cute. Uh, I created a Juliet cat. <laughs> Put her in the balcony, why not? Make use of that balcony. That was also in the residency. Uh, and this was the Cat Gladiator with the Costa Prada shield. The beauty of this was I was working this, this small on my iPad and then it could print up to... So that made a big difference. Uh, these are some examples, backdrop textures. Because I work in theater, and I had to do six productions a year, I have to make a lot in a short amount of time. So uh, quantity is really important. Now as I'm getting older, I have to start looking at my quality. There's things about my own artwork I need to improve and learn more about. But working large scale is just something that I've been doing for a while. Recently, I'm now getting my MFA in film direction with killer films, so um, Carol, Still Alice, Kids, those independent films, the producer um, is in charge of the school. Okay, uh, last year was fairly significant. The Merman came back, and now it was the Merman combined with what I learned from Conserat. So now... It's a combination of like, this takes time to learn from summer to summer. So I s developed the monster jet ski for him. I was making more of like the props. Um, I started uh, just playing around with his duck. And then over here, this is called comedy of size. Where the big guy has the little duck and the, the little guy has the jet ski. So this is when we get into theater. There's like a relationship between canvases. Um, this was like a Sophia Loren, Mad Max type of things. All of these are very like, these are sketches for me to brainstorm. Then later on I go back and I make them darker. Uh, this one was... The pregnant mermaid, because um, usually, you know, uh, people cut, like, so I've seen a lot of pregnant women, they'll cover up the stomach sometimes when they go swimming. And, but then I started seeing a lot of bikini pregnancy, and I, I wanted to do some cool tattoo mermaid stuff. Started doing the factory world, like Ralph Steadman. Once again, going to industrial parks, looking at... Uh, different screws, nuts, bolts, pipes, how do they like come together? In one way, this could actually be a sculpture if I, you know, put it. 
Um, once again, developing more of his story, Mermaid has a tire. He cannot swim. He's an outcast. Uh, and her, Stella, she fits into a whole world of Royal Tenenbaums, Eloise, um, very much that, that female in pink. Um, but I think I want to take it on a slightly different journey. Okay. Now for this year, oh, there we are. Okay. Um, some really interesting turns happened. Um, I started taking the work and adding the script. The script is not showing right now, but that's okay. Um, so for all of these things that are in this illustration, I have script descriptions. So in this, and it's in the room we'll look at, um, he's looking at a TV and he sees all the commercial and news. So I was able to sort of brainstorm that. Um, I developed more characters that are part of the story, um, as well as turning points. So now the artwork isn't just character and place and prop. We're now getting to in events when um, he is going to be judged, or he might die, or they're going to get married. Now I'm actually getting to events. Um, Stella enters with a floral dress that matches the wallpaper. I'm also now getting to actual the storyboarding, how it's going to look when it's filmed. Um, so now it started from, it's, it's like building each way. Uh, and further events in art direction were identified. So in the room, um, I have examples. I was working at the table for two weeks. Everything was contained. Then I had one week in the cave. And that's when the scale came out. And the scale has been very interesting because I learned different things. When I draw them bigger, I get different details. And it's really um, an interesting process. Uh, and thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro, bro. Yeah. Yeah.